So that is the introduction of all the notation symbols and so on. What I want to do next is to talk about the geometry in high dimensional space. So let's imagine that we are now living in a high dimensional space. High dimensional space means that it's bigger than two. Uh, and then I want to uh, introduce not just a line, but a plane, okay? A plane that's called the separating hyperplane. This plane is a set that contains all the x such that this gx will equal to zero. So I, if I give you this gx, gx equals to w transpose x plus w zero. If I set this equal to zero, and all the x that lives on this uh, e e equation, that will be uh, living on that plane. And you can also show that uh, there's a normal vector of this plane. This normal vector is given by this w divided by uh, the norm of w. Uh, okay. So I want to first convince you uh, why is... Uh, so now if I give you this equation, this is the equation I give you. And then I claim that uh, uh, this is the normal vector. The normal vector is w divided by w. Uh, w divided by um, and the two norm of W. Uh, why is this the normal vector of uh, the separating hyperplane? I want to make sure this, geom this geometry is clear. So I want to do the following analysis. So suppose um, we have two points on this plane. Okay, I want to show you that the perpendicular line to this plane, of course, that's the normal direction, okay? And I want to show you that this, this normal direction is indeed this W. Now, why is this the case? Well, first of all, we can write down two equations. The first equation says that since my x1 is on the plane, right, then, of course, that will satisfy uh, this equation of gx equals to zero, or gx1 equals to zero, because, because x1 really lives on that plane, so when you put the x1 into the g, you will get zero. So that will give you this equation, w transpose x1 plus w0 will give you zero. Uh, similarly, if you pick another point x2 on the plane, you will also get that equation. Now you have a pair of equations. So what do you do? Well, you can take the difference between these two equations. And what you can show is that uh, consider the difference between x1 and x2, okay? So if you can see that the difference between x1 and x2, then uh, you can show that uh, uh, <coughs> W transpose of x1 minus x2 will equal to what? That will equal to zero, right? Because you take the first equation minus the second equation, you will get this. The W zeros, they are, they're canceled. So you get to this equation. Now, let's go back to this diagram. You see, you realize that uh, what is uh, x1 minus x2? It's just this red vector. Correct? Okay, because both x1 and x2, they're they they both living on that plane. So that would be, uh, that this red vector would define x1 minus x2. And now, you take the inner product of w and this red vector, and that is equal to zero. So what does it mean? That means, this vector w has to be orthogonal to this red vector. Otherwise, you wouldn't get this inner product to be zero. Okay? So, when this is orthogonal to this uh, x1 and x2, that means this is really, this w is really orthogonal to the plane. Because x1 and x2, they're just two arbitrary numbers I choose on the plane. Okay? So, if w take an inner product with any pairs of the x1 and x2, that means uh, w has to be orthogonal to, uh, to the entire plane. That shows that W is indeed the normal vector of your plane. And then what do I do? Well, I just divide by its norm so that the normal vector you have unit norm. Okay, so that, that shows you a very simple picture that if you have um, two sets of data points, you draw a plane, then there is a normal vector. The normal vector is exactly defined by this W uh, vector. Okay? Now, what is the meaning of this W0? This W0 means that you can shift the plane upper and lower. Okay, so that's the offset. So what are the degrees of freedom that you have in this problem? You can rotate the plane. Okay, that is by changing uh, the W. You can also move the plane up and down, left and right. 
Okay, so that is changing the W is zero. So these are the degrees of freedom that you can play with for this model. No more than that. That's a linear model. All right. So the next question is again a problem about the geometry. I give you a data point, okay, uh, which is of course not living on the plane. I want to ask you what is the closest distance from the point to the plane. Okay, now we need to measure that because uh, imagine you have you have a you have a separated hyperplane and then a point that's extremely close to your decision boundary, then you will say that it is actually not a very good decision boundary because it's as long as you have a small perturbation of data point, you can go across a class. It's too too sensitive. Right? So you want to measure the separation between your plane and also the data point. That's called the margin. Okay, if you have taken a class on another machine learning course, you know it's a thing called support vector machine that's measuring the margin. That is it. Okay, so here we want to spend a few minutes here uh, to understand how do we calculate the distance from a point to a plane. Extremely simple exercise. We want to do it. Okay, so now there are two approaches to, to solve this problem. I will I will illustrate both to make sure that we really get the idea. Now the first approach is to do it on the picture. Okay, something that I prefer to do. So what do you have? Imagine that you have x0, which is not on the plane. It's either on the positive side or on the, on the negative side of the plane. You have a data point x0. And now, on, uh, along this uh, uh, normal vector, you draw uh, on this plane xp. Okay, so xp is really on your separating hyperplane. Then x0 minus xp would define as normal direction. That's clear because that's a plane and then you, you have a point, just move along the normal direction, you get xp. Um, then what do you have? Well, since this direction is w, right? Then we know that the, 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 the traveling direction has to be w. As long as I can figure out the, the step size, I will know uh, how to travel from xp to x0. Okay, so the, all the, all the, the only thing I need to do is to figure out this distance. But that's not too hard because uh, uh, if I know that the traveling uh, direction is w divided by w2 norm, and I know that this vector, wait, this is a vector, is denoted by x0 minus xp, then I know that x0 minus xp has to be a, a, a scalar eta times your w vector. Now, realize that this w vector has a, has, has a unit norm because I divided by the two norm. Okay? So, uh, I have a scalar that would define your, your, your distance between, uh, the plane and the point. Okay, so now I can also plot this point xp into the equation of g. Why? Because I know that xp is living on the plane, so if I put xp into the g, I will get zero. So what do I get? Well, let's look at this equation. So this equation says that g of xp equals to zero. Now I can also evaluate g of x zero. Then what is a g of x is zero? It would be w transpose x zero plus w zero. And then you can replace this um, x zero by what? Well, x zero you have, you have here. You have here, right? Because x zero would just be xp plus whatever you have this travel. Okay, so you put this number in, then you get the following equation. You have W transpose of this quantity, and then you can squeeze this XP out, and then combine with W0, that will give you G of XP. Follow me? Okay, then what do we have left? Well, what do we have left is this term. So you have W transpose, of eta w divided by the two norm of w two norm. Uh, so then you will get eta of w two norm square divided by the w of two norm. So since they have a square, you can remove one of those. That will give you eta times the two norm of w. Okay? Now, what is this? This is zero because of the condition that xp lives on the plane. So now you get a very simple equation that says that g of x0 is just eta times the two norm of w. Okay, so now you can do what? Well, then you can just move around the terms. Okay, so since, since the previous uh, slide says 
that g of uh, x0 equals to eta of the norm of w, then you can just re uh, divide both sides by the two norm of w, you get eta. And so eta will equal to 1, well, it will, it will equal to g time, g evaluated at x0 divided by the two norm of w. So what do you have? You find the distance between the point and also the plane. Isn't it? Because the, the, the distance is exactly your eta. Eta is your distance. And so now I have expression of the eta, and it's g x0 divided by the two norm of w. So I find that. Okay, so then what? Well, then I can, further, I can tell you exactly what is this xp. This xp will be x0 minus this, this propagation. Okay, so it will be x0 minus eta times this normal vector. And so you have this expression here. So you have xp that will equal to uh, gx0 divided by the two norm of w times this normal vector. Okay, now you can decouple these two terms to see that xp, this point on the plane, is exactly equal to x0 minus the distance, that is your, uh, that, that, that is your eta, okay, and then times the normal vector, which is this uh, w divided by w two norm. Without any calculus, just by drawing a picture, we can get everything we want, okay? So now when people ask you, I have a data set, I have two groups of data points, and then I have a plane, can you tell me what is the margin? You go through the data set, find the point that's closest to your data, closest to your plane, measure that distance according to this formula, you get it. Now, how do you measure? It's actually very simple. You just put all the data points through this G, okay, and what is this G? And don't forget that this G is just uh, w transpose x plus w0. So as long as you have w, you have w0, calculating this g is, is fairly straightforward. Okay, so you evaluate all these data points and then you can tell what is the smallest distance from the data set to the plane. Everything is clear, okay? Okay, now there is an alternative approach to solve this problem. Uh, the alternative approach to solve this problem is by means of optimization. Okay, now uh, we, we sort of quickly uh, go through that uh, in, in a couple of lectures ago, but I want to um, redo it again to make sure that you also get the, this idea because um, this could be a little bit more general because sometimes you may not have a simple picture to draw and so you want to use a more general tool uh, in optimization to solve the same problem. So what is the problem that we are encountering? Well, we're encountering this. We want to minimize the distance between x and x0. So x would be your optimization variable. That would be a point on the plane, although I haven't de decided which point yet. Okay, I need to solve this optimization problem to find a point on the plane such that this distance is minimized. And then I have a constraint that this point has to live on the plane. Okay, so this equation says that gx equals to zero. So uh, literally what it means is that I have a plane, uh, all the solutions, they have to live on this plane, and then I have an x zero here. I want to find this closest distance such that uh, uh, this is my, my, my x. Okay, so uh, I need to solve this problem. Now, how do we solve this problem? This is a constraint minimization problem, and therefore, I want to set up a Lagrangian. This Lagrangian will have two variables. You have x, you have a lambda. Lambda is called a Lagrange multiplier. Then you have uh, this objective function, and then you have this Lagrange multiplier term. Um, then you take the uh, derivative with respect to x and with respect to lambda, set it to zero, and then you have a pair of equations to work out. Uh, so what do we have? Well, uh, you have this pair of equations, and then you have all these uh, uh, conditions. So we can start with this equation, and then we can multiply both sides by W transpose, and you can add W0 to the both sides, and then you go through all these derivations, okay? Now, if you're not following, it's okay to go home and then buy the coffee and then sit down for, for 10 minutes, you'll be able to do it. Okay, it's just linear algebra. So I'm skipping that. And then at the end of the day, what do you have? Well, at the end of the day, you will get to here. Okay, now let's look at this expression. You have this x will equal to x0 plus 
uh, this g is evaluated at x0 divided by the 2 norm square of w. Okay, so that is your solution. And you can rearrange this solution to the following form. Okay, so x equal to x0, and then you have minus sign, you can pull out this minus sign. You can actually get the exact same solution as before. You have this, this distance times your normal vector. Okay, so that shows you what? What well, that shows you that uh, the pictorial approach matches with your optimization approach. So that's like a cross-validation procedure. Okay, mental cross-validation procedure that you can do in your brain. Okay, to make sure that the solution that you're obtaining for both approaches, they're correct. Okay, um, so uh, we will go into, we are going to use these uh, results very often in a couple occasions. One is that we are going to define the uh, 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 separating hyperplanes. We are going to define the classifiers. So that will give us a way to measure how far you are from uh, uh, the, the data set. Uh, another occasion that we'll use is to define support vector machines. Okay, so in, in that occasion, we are going to uh, maximize the margin. Uh, and then the third time that you will see this is when we study adversarial attack. So when you try to attack a data point from one side to the other, then you need to travel across that, that gap. Okay, and so, and so that traveling process will actually be a reverse process of this problem. Okay, here you, I give you a plane, I give you a data point, and then I tell you how big the margin is. The other problem is that I give you this data set, I want you to travel across the boundary, so you also need to calculate this distance. Alright, so there are a couple occasions that we want to use this result again and again and again, so we want to make sure that you really get the idea. Any questions so far for this part? Yes. Uh, so if you want to uh, define the hyperplane, let's say the G function, so I'm assuming you need a W and W0, right? So based on this equation, like uh, which point are you supposed to know if you want to find out? Okay, so here we are, okay, so the question is, in when we define this uh, uh, equation G, uh, what are the variables that we need to know, okay? And the answer is that you need to find out the W and you need to find out W0 from the data set. Okay, so in the, in the subsequent lectures, we're going to spend a few weeks to tell you how do you find the W and W0 from the data set. So I, I will give you a set of data points, X1 through Xn, that would be 10,000 data points. What would be the best uh, W and W0? A best, and you need to define what is best. Okay, best could, best could be meaning that uh, you maximize the margin. Best could mean that the 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 error is minimized. So we need to define what is best. Okay, but once we define that's best, then we need to solve an optimization problem to find the W and W zero. So now it's not clear yet because in this lecture I just tell you that suppose I give you the W, how do you measure the distance, right? And this measure distance uh, approach will work for any W. So if later parts, we can find a good W, then of course you can somehow maybe maximize the margin or minimize the training error or something, okay?